First steps to order some templates. I'm in designer. In designer, I'm in the one identity manager schema section. And here I'm just selecting a table, for example, my person table. And if I open that person table, I'm easy to see some columns. Here they are. And uh, for now, I like to show you how templates in general works. And so I take my custom property. Here we are. And on the custom property, I want to generate a template that will write in the account name that is assigned to the department, which is assigned to the person object. And if this is not possible because there is no department designed, then it should be the cost center account name of the person itself. To write something like that, I have to go into the custom property A01. Here I am. I have to select the value calculation tab. It is automatically selected. And here is everything I need for templates. There is the override switch. There is the template. And I like now to create such a template. I set the override switch because the template always should take care. And then I start editing code. Of course, this is a small box. Okay, you can write two or three lines into. I like to expand the box first. Therefore, I click here on the right specific icon and get now the code editor. Some thoughts about the code editor. First of all, the code editor allows me to use predefined snippets. And to use these predefined snippets, I can press F2. If I press F2, I get the snippet editor. And he knows about two different specific layers. There's the object layer itself and the visual basic layer. Visual Basic shows Visual Basic content stuff. The object layer shows something with the One Identity Manager API. For example, if I go to Visual Basic and I'm interested in an if and the else statement, I can just get it easily with the help of that. Once I need in this specific if then else statement something with the object layer, then I can just take the other one and can just take something from the object layer. For example, I can start to create a SQL formatter. Here we are. To get now my exercise fixed, the first thing I will do is I will just delete the SQL formatter, especially because I don't need a SQL formatter for that. And let the if then else there. Now let's start. I need here a condition. And this condition is that if the department which is assigned to my person object is configured or not. To figure out my department information, I press a dollar sign and I get a selection list. The selection list shows me now all of the data fields existing on my person object. For my exercise, I need the foreign key to department, which starts with a new ID and here with department we are. And the only thing I have to know here is that this department exists or not. So I just press a tab. I get the complete reference to the UID department. And here I add an operator for not equal and the empty string. If I do something like that, uh, then I have to ensure that UID department comes back as a string. And this could be done by just typing the data type behind the column name. But I have to do it in front of the closing dollar sign. Here we are. So column name UID department converted to string should not be equal. If this is the case, that means this is not equal, then what I have to do in the future is I have to take the account number of the cost center assigned to my department, assigned to my person object. If this thing is empty, I have to take the cost center information of the user. So these two things to do. How to do that? First of all, if I want to assign something, and that means the value of the field, to my script, I have to use something that is called value. Value always returns the field's value. So if I start with value equals, I have now to assign something to that specific field value. And the account number of the cost center, which is assigned to the department, assigned to my person object, is following now a foreign key relation. So I press a dollar again. These are my person table columns. UID department, that is something I know, but this time I don't press tab, I press right arrow. And with that, I jump now into the department. Here I can see my departments. I'm interested in the cost center assigned to the department, which is UID profit center. Here we are. And with a right click again, I will automatically jump into the cost center table. And here I take the account number. The whole thing converted to a string. 
will at the end return a string which is the account number of the profit center assigned to the department which is assigned to my account. If this will not work, I have to use my cost center and therefore I do exactly the same, value equals and then UID profit center, right arrow click and then account number, tab and here we are, to string will solve my problem. To be honest, this is a template typically for people who want to learn something because it is very easy to understand. It's an easy if then else, but it will not work for all purpose. And the one or the other will figure it out. What happens if the UID department exists, like here it is the condition, and the UID of the profit center will not exist on, for example, the department. I have to handle that as well. And what I can do there, I can use another if, I can use an else if or whatever, but I can consider that as well in my condition, which will then now the end point of my description. So I press in there end, and this time UID department, I think you know it in the meantime, and there UID profit center to string and is not allowed to be an empty string. So here we are. And if I look into that and I see that this condition here contains automatically this condition, I can just delete the first part and I'm good. This is how to create very easily a script in Designer just to generate a template. Two things to know. I have to compile the script before the complete template starts working. Second thing to know if my templates gets a little bit more complex, it is very often to create scripts and to call then these scripts here in this template section with a couple of parameters. The only thing I have to consider, if I use scripts, it should be a function script all the time because I need a value that returns. I save the whole thing. I commit the whole stuff to the database. I only want to commit my special template change here. Here we are. I need a new change label for that because it is a new exercise. I have to save the change label and I can just select it. The complete thing gets stored. Now I can just run the database compiler and compile the database. Because I know that only templates was modified, I have not to do compile scripts. I don't need to compile processes. I don't need to compile other stuff. Templates, it's the only thing I like to compile. And in seconds, this is done. And shortly after it finished, I can just test my new template. Therefore, I have only to step into my object browser, for example. Object browser is always a good idea for testing templates. I need the person table because the template was created for the person table. Here we are. In the person table, I need just a person object. And as I can see on the person object, there is a department assigned. That is good. And right click on the department, says go to the reference object. Now I am with the department and I can see on the department that there is a profit center assigned. With that, I'm pretty sure my template should work. So I return to one of these person objects. I have to observe the column custom property 01. Here it is. And uh, to calculate the templates now, I can just recalculate the templates for the complete object. So object and execute templates. And as you can see, here is the account number we are searching for. As seen, this is our first template we developed seconds before. And uh, what you might have seen here is that there are these very interesting dollar constructions, for example, this FK with the UID profit center account number and so on. And as a VB.net pro, you may see as well that dollar, whatever else dollar, it's something that looks not really like VB.net. And so the question is, what it is. And it is a specific identity manager uh, construction that helps to specify references to other database objects. And what happens with that uh, gets pretty clear if we look at both of them in a code editor. Uh, you see here in the first sample, this is our template like it is in designer. It's exactly the same template just with copy and paste here into that specific tool. But if we take the same 
look at this specific template in a Visual Studio, then you will see that all of these dollar constructions are disappeared and get replaced by something that looks like that. Get value and then parenthesis and double quote and the complete FK as it is defined on the upper as well. At the end, there is a string or because that is part of the definition of these dollar definitions again. And the rest of the template looks like before. So these dollar constructions and of course one or the other more of these constructions gets replaced once the code gets compiled. That means in designer, in the database, you will find these constructions. But if the compiler starts its dirty work, then the compiler will just replace all of these special uh, constructions by correct vb.net code before you start to compile everything. You can see the same, by the way, if you just load the templates into a Visual Studio, because in Visual Studio, all of these special constructions will not work. And so the loading process of code into Visual Studio as well replaces all of them.